The sun has been a significant area of strength for us, especially of late, and it will go through a basic, moreover fascinating change, the inversion of its magnetic field. This connection occurs generally at regular intervals, meaning the midpoint of the solar cycle. Moreover, it has broad repercussions for us here on Earth. In fact, rapidly, the sun could make it possible to present a serious risk that could cause complete disruption and catastrophe for everybody on the planet. As you will find, the sun's magnetic field is made by the development of electrically charged gases in its interior, a cycle known as the solar dynamo. Over the long term, this magnetic field becomes increasingly tangled and reshaped because of the sun's rotation and convective changes. Ultimately, this cycle leads to a complete inversion of the magnetic poles, the north magnetic pole changes into the south magnetic pole and vice versa. So, might we at some point dissect the entire cycle and investigate the sun? The sun is primarily made of hydrogen and helium as plasma, a state of matter where electrons are not bound to atoms, resulting in a combination of free electrons and ions. The sun's interior is divided into several layers, with the core at the center, enclosed by the radiative zone and the convective zone. The core is the sun's most significant region, where nuclear fusion occurs, converting hydrogen into helium and producing immense amounts of energy. Above the core lies the radiative zone, where energy is transferred outward through radiation. In this space, energy moves slowly outward as photons are absorbed and re-emitted by the solar plasma. The outer layer of the sun's interior is the convective zone, where energy is transferred by convection. Hot plasma rises toward the surface, cools, and sinks again, creating convection currents. The solar dynamo process works fundamentally in the convective zone and the tachycline, a thin layer that lies between the radiative zone and the convective zone. The tachycline is crucial because it is where the sun's differential rotation and shear flows play a key role in generating the magnetic field. Now, here's something interesting that you probably haven't heard. The sun doesn't rotate as a solid body. Rather, different parts of the sun rotate at different rates, with the equator turning faster than the poles, a phenomenon known as differential rotation. This differential rotation stretches and twists the magnetic field lines, elongating the magnetic field. The solar cycle is approximately 11 years long, during which the sun's magnetic field undergoes a series of changes culminating in the inversion of its poles. This cycle is driven by the solar dynamo and involves several phases. At the beginning of the solar cycle, the sun is in a state known as solar minimum, characterized by a low number of sunspots and minimal solar activity. The magnetic field is generally simple and bipolar, with a clear north and south magnetic pole. As the cycle progresses, the number of sunspots increases. Sunspots are areas of intense magnetic activity and are associated with the rise of magnetic activity from the sun's interior. These sunspots appear in pairs with opposite magnetic polarities and move toward the equator over time. Around the midpoint of the solar cycle, the sun reaches solar maximum, a period of peak activity with the highest number of sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections, CMEs. The magnetic field becomes increasingly complex and tangled due to the continuous twisting and shearing from differential rotation and convection. As solar maximum fades, the magnetic field begins to reconfigure itself, the reshaped and tangled magnetic field lines reconnect, and the global magnetic field gradually reverses its polarity. The north magnetic pole becomes the south magnetic pole and vice versa. This cycle is facilitated by the movement and restructuring of solar plasma. After the pole inversion, the sun enters a period of declining activity, returning to solar minimum. Eventually, the magnetic field reconfigures again, and the cycle is ready to begin anew. Currently, we are in the solar maximum stage, and the sun's magnetic field is about to flip. During this phase, we can expect to see some activity from the sun that could be as hazardous as it is fascinating. However, the sun's magnetic field inversion is not an unexpected flip. Rather, it is a continuous process. As the solar cycle progresses, the sun's magnetic field undergoes a series of changes. At a certain point, the magnetic field becomes so twisted and tangled that it reaches a tipping point and begins to reconfigure itself, resulting in the flip. 
So, do we know when the sun's magnetic field will flip? Researchers monitor the sun's magnetic activity using various instruments and techniques. Observatories equipped with powerful telescopes, both on Earth and in space, provide detailed images of the sun's surface and its sunspots. Instruments like the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, SOHO, and the Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO, measure the sun's magnetic field and its changes over time. One key sign of an impending magnetic inversion is the behavior of sunspots. During solar maximum, sunspots appear more frequently and become more pronounced as they move toward the sun's equator, a sign that the magnetic field is becoming more unstable and is preparing to flip. While we're on the subject, let's dive a bit deeper into sunspots. When the sun's magnetic field lines become twisted and tangled due to differential rotation, the sun's equator rotates faster than its poles, causing the magnetic lines to stretch and curve. When these lines loop over the sun's surface, they suppress the convective motion of hot plasma from the sun's interior, resulting in the cooler, darker patches we observe in sunspot images. Sunspots are not just fascinating solar features. They can sometimes produce powerful solar flares and coronal mass ejections, CMEs. These phenomena release huge amounts of energy and charged particles into space. When directed toward Earth, they can disrupt satellite communications, affect power grids, and pose risks to astronauts in space. Additionally, increased solar activity can enhance auroras, but it can also raise radiation levels in Earth's upper atmosphere. So, while we're on the subject, let's examine the difference between solar flares and coronal mass ejections, CMEs. While both are massive bursts of energy from the sun, they differ fundamentally. Solar flares are sudden, intense bursts of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy associated with sunspots. They release enormous amounts of energy and light, often as X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. Think of them as eruptions of bright light and heat on the sun's surface, like a massive explosion. In contrast, CMEs are huge releases of solar wind and magnetic fields from the solar corona. They can be considered giant bubbles of gas and magnetic fields being ejected into space. When a coronal mass ejection occurs, it sends billions of tons of solar particles into space at incredibly high speeds. While solar flares and CMEs are linked, they are not the same. A solar flare can occur independently, but sometimes an extremely strong solar flare can be accompanied by a CME. Though a solar flare doesn't necessarily cause a CME, they can be connected. In terms of potential hazards, solar flares can disrupt radio communications, navigation signals, and pose a significant risk to astronauts in space due to the intense radiation. However, CMEs can have a broader impact. CMEs can cause geomagnetic storms that disrupt power systems, satellite operations, and navigation systems. They can also enhance auroras, but they pose serious risks to Earth's technology and infrastructure. Another consideration is that during times of high solar activity, the amount of high radiation reaching Earth also increases. Satellites and other space vehicles are particularly vulnerable to elevated solar activity. The charged particles from the sun can damage electronic components, disrupt communication signals, and even alter satellite orbits. Beyond harming technology and infrastructure, what else can happen to the planet? While the sun's magnetic field inversion doesn't directly affect Earth's atmosphere, the related changes in solar activity can have an impact. Some studies suggest that variations in solar radiation can influence climate conditions and weather patterns. For example, increased solar activity can lead to a slight warming of Earth's atmosphere, potentially fueling existing climate change. Could auroras be the only positive aspect we experience here on Earth? Perhaps one of the most striking impacts of increased solar activity is the enhancement of these magnificent lights. These natural light displays, known as the northern and southern lights, occur when charged particles from the sun interact with Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere. We often hear about the aurora borealis, but these lights can also be seen around the South Pole. During times of high solar activity, auroras become more frequent and can be visible at lower latitudes, offering dramatic nighttime shows. However, aside from the beautiful auroras, 
There are also more concerning aspects of the sun's magnetic inversion that could occur if we are unprepared. One of the primary risks associated with a magnetic field inversion is the increased likelihood of geomagnetic storms. These storms occur when the solar wind, overloaded with charged particles, interacts with Earth's magnetic field. In extreme cases, they can cause widespread power outages and damage communication infrastructure. One such event occurred on the morning of September 1, 1859. Astronomer Richard Carrington was observing the sun through his telescope as he had done many times before. However, what he saw on this particular day would go down in history as the first recorded solar storm. At 11.18 a.m., Carrington saw a brilliant flare of white light emanating from a group of sunspots. This event, now known as the Carrington Event, marked the beginning of the largest geomagnetic storm ever recorded. The white light Carrington saw was a massive solar flare, an intense explosion of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy stored in the sun's atmosphere. This flare was so powerful that it triggered a massive coronal mass ejection, CME, directed toward Earth. The CME reached Earth in just 17.6 hours, an incredibly short time considering the sun is 93 million miles away. When the CME hit Earth's magnetosphere, it triggered an unusually strong geometry. Agnetic storm. The effects were felt worldwide, causing disruptions in telegraph systems, sparking fires, and creating vivid auroras that could be seen as far south as the Caribbean.